Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd do something slightly different. I'm going to be doing a mummy tag that's been produced by Emily Norris. But before I do, if you are new to my channel, then hello and welcome. It's lovely to have you here. And if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more, then I upload every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at 7 a.m. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. So as I just mentioned, today I'm going to be doing a mummy tag that's been produced by Emily Norris. Emily Norris is a really big YouTuber and I thought I'd do her mum tag because it's nearly Mother's Day and that's what she's designed it for Mother's Day so I thought I'd do this so she set up a series of questions that we have to answer and they're all to do with motherhood and things to do with being a mum and stuff I thought this would be really interesting and I thought it would be something that you might like to hear so here is my mummy tag by Emily Norris so the first question is what is your favorite mum hack so my favorite mum hack, I haven't got anything specific, but I'd probably say the one thing I really like to be is prepared. So anything I can do the night before or the day before, I will always do it. Um, I'm not one of these people who can just like pack and go. I really don't like being in a panic and being stressed out. I like to be able to walk out the door calmly knowing that I have everything with me. I also find that if I do everything the night before or as much as I can the day before, then I normally don't forget anything. If I do it on the day, I tend to forget stuff and I really Really don't like forgetting stuff so that's why I will always do it the night before so that's probably my number one mum hack so the second question is what is your most embarrassing mum moment and I think I had this a few weeks ago so uh, we have a Facebook group page for TED school and most of the mums are on this page um, and somebody had put up like put up like a sarky comment. Someone had been and asked the head teacher a few questions and they put up two posts to do with these questions and then someone had come on afterwards and said, oh, and make sure you make your, I don't know, homemade cakes and the school's closing early, so go and collect your kids. And they didn't put an LOL at the end. And I was thinking, and they didn't put any like smiley faces or anything, so I was thinking, Oh my God, do we have to collect everybody early? So I started scouring my internet pages thinking, oh my God, I've got to collect Ted early and I haven't heard a word. And I've got to make a cake tomorrow. Um, and I sort of thought to myself, is this a joke? Is this not a joke? I wasn't too sure. And I went to the school gate anyway to collect Ted and there were a couple of mums there. And I sort of said to them, oh, did you see that message earlier? And they went, yeah, it was a joke, Alexis. I was like, oh, okay. <sighs> But I felt really embarrassed and really stupid because I didn't, but then I thought about it afterwards and I thought, well, they didn't actually put a smiley face or an LOL or anything at the end. So it was embarrassing at the time it happened, but I kind of convinced myself otherwise. The next question is, what part of the day do you love the most? And when Ted was probably about three and he was still having his afternoon naps, I'd probably have said then that my most favorite part of the day was when he used to wake up from his naps and I'd take him downstairs and we'd sit on the sofa for half an hour and we'd have a little cuddle after his nap. I loved him then because he was all sleepy, still a bit sleepy, and he used to love just sitting on my lap and sitting still. My son is not the greatest child for sitting still. He does like to move a lot. So um, to get him to sit still for half an hour is an absolute luxury. Um, nowadays, I'd say that my morning cuddle first thing in the morning is the my most favorite part of the day. Um, I tend to get up earlier than everybody else in the house and I tend to come downstairs and do a bit of exercise and Ted will always come down and find me. And after I finish my exercise, we'll have a little morning cuddle then. Um, and I love that part of the day because he's still a bit sleepy and he still loves that sort of cuddle time. So yes, that's my most favorite part of the day. The next question is, what part of the day do you like the least? And I have to say, I don't like first thing when we have to get out the door to go to school. So weekdays, 
when it's Monday to Friday and we have to be out the door to school. I really don't like that part of the day. Um, Ted just tends to want to sit and watch television. Once he's had his breakfast and he's brushed his teeth, he's allowed to come downstairs and watch TV for like five minutes before we go out. It just gives me that five minutes to get ready and then, then we can go. And I always find it difficult to tell him to turn off the TV and sort of put on his shoes. That's the part of the day I really don't like and I always feel a bit rushed at that time. As I mentioned earlier, I like to be calm when I go out the front door, but school mornings I always feel really rushed and I try not to, but I can't help it. I want to make sure that we get to the school gate on time. So yes, that's probably the least part, my least favorite part of my day, I have to the say. The next question is the worst thing someone said to you when you were pregnant. Um, when I was pregnant, I really didn't have a very big bump at all. My bump was all front as well. Someone once said to me, you look like you had you have a football up your jumper and at the time I just used to laugh it off but towards the end of my pregnancy when I was like starting to not enjoy pregnancy that much anymore and wanted to get the baby out when people said oh you haven't got a big bump and then I'd say oh I'm eight months they go oh you've got ages yet that would really annoy me I know it sounds silly because most women put on quite a lot of weight I didn't put on hardly any weight at all and my bump was tiny but it was the fact that my bump was tiny it does work in the opposite way as well when people start saying oh you're tiny you're tiny it does start to get a little bit annoying at first it was fine but then towards the end of the pregnancy it started to really irritate me so yes I think that's probably the worst thing people could say was your bump is so small well you've got ages left yet oh the next question is baby names you didn't agree on um I like really unusual names, so I like names like Rufus and Sienna and things like that, but unfortunately my husband is a bit more traditional and he really doesn't like names like that. When I mentioned Rufus, he nearly fell off his chair with laughter, he's like, I'm not calling my son Rufus like that. And Sienna, if we had a girl, he didn't want that either. So there were quite a lot of baby names that we didn't agree on. I don't really know how we came to the conclusion of Ted but we did he really liked that name and so did I so I thought I'm just gonna go with that one um, but yes we didn't agree on a lot of names so there wasn't just one name there were quite a few we didn't agree on so yes Rufus Sienna anything unusual in this house and it was a no-go the next question is do you co-sleep and this is an interesting question for me because in recent months I've been thinking that maybe we should have co-slept more with our son. I know it sounds quite strange now for me to say that but my husband couldn't sleep with my son in the room because he was making a lot of noise as a baby and he was tossing and turning. So within the first two weeks Ted was put into his own room um, and don't get me wrong that's given him I think that's given him a lot of independence and a lot more courage in some sort of way but I also feel like I've lost a bit of that connection with him if you know what I mean I do think co-sleeping now is good for children I think it gives them a certain connection with their parents and I think we've lost that through putting him into his own room. Um, we don't co-sleep with Ted. We never really have. There was only a couple of occasions when he was a toddler that he couldn't sleep did I bring him into our bed. Um, and a few months ago he tried to get into my bed and I knew Howard wouldn't have it so I just took him next door and I put him into his bed and then I stayed with him for a little while and left. So no, I've never co-slept with my children, my child even, um, but I do think that that's something I've missed out on now. Next question is something you brought but never used. Um, I can't really think of anything that we didn't actually use. Um, we used most of the stuff we brought. I think I brought myself a really huge nappy changing bag. I thought this would be really good. I thought I think I was leaving home or something. Um, my son did have reflux however and at the time he was having reflux he was throwing up a lot so I think I put a small plastic jug in my nappy changing bag which is why I decided that I needed a huge nappy changing bag um, 
But that lasted about three months and I got rid of the huge nappy changing bag in the end um, and just started to carry the jug in a plastic bag, I think. Um, so yes, probably the huge nappy changing bag was probably a bit of a waste of money. Um, and uh, I can't really think of anything else. Probably those mats that we bought as well for Ted, like the gym mats. He used those for about three weeks and then he started to throw up his, so I couldn't really leave him on a mat on his back because he would just throw his milk up. So yes, that was probably the only things that I can think of that we didn't really use that much. The next question is three hospital bag must-haves. Um, I'd say pads for down there, um, pads for here were must-haves and probably a going home outfit as well, something nice to go home in. When Ted was born it was the middle of August um, so I just put on, I just threw on like a long dress, a long floaty dress over the top of everything and that was really simple and really easy to wear. If, it, if he was born in winter I probably would have chosen like jogging bottoms and a t-shirt um, simply because I had a c-section so yeah um, I had sort of like a bandage here so putting on jeans at that time probably would have hurt a lot so yes I'd say something comfy but stylish to go home in um, is a must have in my hospital bag as so well. So the next question is, are you a routine mum or a go with the flow mum and what does bedtime look like? So I would say I'm definitely a routine mum. As I mentioned earlier, I like everything to be in order and I like to know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. Um, I do try to let go occasionally and go with the flow but I do find that difficult and bedtime is very routine as well so at seven o'clock we turn the TV off and Ted has half an hour before he goes to bed with no TV um, I find this calms him down a lot before bedtime and then we'll have a bath and then we'll get him dressed in his pyjamas, brush his teeth, we'll read him a book do some nursery rhymes and then it's normally time for bed. So that's what bedtime looks like in our house. Yes. Next question is, what type of labour did you have and what type of pain relief did you have? So I wanted an all natural birth, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, Ted was three days early um, and he his head got stuck in the birth canal and he was grabbing hold of the umbilical cord as he was coming out so his heart rate kept dipping um, they didn't tell me any of this until after I'd had my c-section so I had a c-section but they didn't tell me any of this until after but I kind of knew I was in trouble when about 20 people descended on me in the room um, my legs akimbo um, I'd been to an NCT class and we'd learned about c-sections and emergency c-sections and they said when 20 people descend on you that's when you know you're in trouble so I knew I was in trouble um, and then so that happened probably about eight o'clock in the morning and then probably by about half past ten I was like this doesn't feel right and I said to the nurse this doesn't feel right so she hit the emergency button and I had a c-section I wasn't planning a c-section I actually wanted a water birth in the hospital but unfortunately that didn't happen I didn't have any pain relief up until they put the injection in to numb my legs and stuff so I didn't actually have any pain relief and I didn't want any pain relief either I really was hoping for a natural birth but it didn't happen but thankfully my son came out safe and sound so that's the main thing he arrived here safely next so, question is have you ever been mum shamed and I can honestly say that I have actually been mum shamed um, there was a time when Ted we were finding it difficult potty training Ted Ted kept he wouldn't go for a poo on the toilet. He'd go for a wee, but he wouldn't go for a poo. And he kept going behind things and um, sort of standing and doing a poo in his pants. Um, and it got to the point where he'd actually go outside and start doing a poo in his pants. 
and uh, we were, I was sitting chatting to another mum at like a play centre one day and he'd gone behind this other mum's buggy and he was standing there and, she, and he'd done a poo and she sat on the floor with her two children who she, I don't think she'd potty trained at the time and she said to me, I think your son's just done a poo in his pants and I was like, yeah, I know, thanks like that because it would take about five minutes to get Ted to go to the toilet so I had to pick my moment with him and I tried to explain this to her and she just looked at me as if I was some sort of weirdo for not changing my son's bottom but honestly it was one of the most difficult things to do was to get Ted to go to the toilet and change his pants after he'd done a poo that kid was quite happy sometimes just to walk around with a poo in his pants. I know it sounds awful, but I really did have to pick my moment to tell Ted we need to go to the toilet now. And I don't think she really got that. I don't think she potty trained yet, so I don't think she understood. And I just felt really awful as a mother for not taking my son straight away to the toilet. But I know that I had to pick my moment with him. So yes, that was the one time I felt really ashamed as a mum. The next question is the biggest challenges you faced as a mother. Um, the biggest challenges for me, as I just mentioned, were potty training. Thankfully, touch wood, my son is now five and a half and he's quite good at going to the toilet. No longer poos his pants or anything, so that's good. That's my washing machine going off in the background, by the way, if you can hear that. Um, and also food is a really big challenge for me. When I was a child, I was the sort of kid who would eat anything. You could feed me anything and I would eat it. My son is just like my brother. He's really fussy. He doesn't sit still at the table and he doesn't eat anything like I would either. He's always like, I don't like it. And I can see my dad, my dad used to get really stressed at my brother for saying things like that. And I, and I feel like my dad and I can't help it, but I do get a bit stressed and I know I shouldn't. I know it's not gonna, in the long term, it's not gonna help him with food, but I just can't help it. When someone says, I don't like it, it really, I'm like, oh, it's food, just eat it. So yes, food and potty training so far have been my biggest challenges. So the next question is the biggest piece of advice you've ever been given and the biggest piece of advice you would ever give. Um, I think for me, it's always what my mum says to me, this won't go on forever. So when Ted had reflux and he was throwing up constantly, my mum would always come around and she'd say to me, this won't go on forever, Alexis, this won't go on forever. Um, and when he was, when we were potty training, she'd say to me, he won't be pooing his pants forever, he won't be pooing his pants forever, it won't go on forever, Alexis, I promise. And she, every time she's been right, um, so yes, that's probably the biggest piece of advice I'd give to someone else is it won't go on forever. It's the stage, they'll grow out of it, it's all going to be fine. Um, I know at the time when you're in it, it doesn't feel like that and it's really hard. But I, that's honestly what I just keep telling myself when we go through one of these stages with Ted. I just keep saying it won't go on forever. It won't go on forever. So that's probably the best piece of advice I could ever give to a new parent. And the final question is, who's your mum crush? And I would have to say my nan is probably my biggest mum crush. My nan had had quite a hard childhood. She'd lost a, both of her parents. She was orphaned as a child and she was put into the orphanage. Um, she had, she said she loved the orphanage. It was when she was taken out of the orphanage that she didn't like it so much. Um, she said there was routine in the orphanage and I think that taught her a lot as well. Um, but she never really moaned about her lot. She never moaned about her life. She just got on with it and she just would battle through. Um, and she was always a good listener as well. She would always listen to me or she'd always listen to my brother or my mum. Um, and yes, I'd have to say my nan is my biggest mum crush. And I miss her, I really miss her to this day. And I always still use her little sayings. I can't think of any right now, it's really annoying, but I still use her sayings. Um, just, and I always try to think of what she would do in certain situations as well. So yes, my nan, I would have to say, is my biggest mum crush. 
And finally, Emily has asked me to tag two people in this video, so two YouTubers. So the first YouTuber I'm going to tag is the lovely Amy from the Crazy Carnies. And the second YouTuber I'm going to tag is Raven Nessman. And those channels I will link in the description box below for you. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to leave any comments below. Can you relate to any of those questions? I'd love to know. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you all soon. Bye.